Hey guys, how you doing? On this one here, I'm going to be going over the Riello series number four. Uh, basically, on this one, I go over different ways to prime the pump. There's a couple of different ways that you could do it, uh, run the burner to prime the pump. I go over the service manual, what's in there, a um, couple of things to look for. Uh, what's in the service kit that comes with the Riello burner uh, repair kit. Uh, go over that and also I go over basic information about the burner um, you know how to take things apart and stuff like that so um, do appreciate you guys watching and uh, leave feedback please thank you yeah so on the Riello if you've got to prime the pump there's a couple of ways you can do it you can pull the, pump, um, the control off okay with the power off obviously and jump out five and six with a jumper like I had before and then when you turn the power on that'll run the motor and allow you to prime it okay there's also another way you could do it priming it and put the control box back on there okay and you could take this and get light so you can see You'd have to get a light like this, something that's, you know, plastic. You don't want to get one that's got a metal cage on it. But you can take these two screws out, right? one screw there, that one screw there, and pop that cover off. You could start the burner and put a light in there, like that. And that CAD cell would sense the light and keep the burner running. Okay, so you could prime it. That's another way you could do it. But obviously, you don't want to have any of that metal touching them electrodes. I'll run, I'll run the burner also. It won't trip out on safety because you know you got a light in there and the CAD cell sensing the light once it starts. Yeah, we also has a training book um, with all the information for different burners, how to set the electrodes. Okay. Different settings. Different heads. That one I have is an F5. An F3 would have a different type of head. Retention head. They're all different. So it depends on which model you have um, in regards to um, the retention head. And this is basically how it is. If you pull it back all the way, you'll get more air going through the retention head than if you did push it forward a little bit. And there's different settings that you can set it at. But that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty good example there. You'd have air going around the retention head on this one. Now if you pull this assembly all the way back, you would have no air going around it. You'd have everything going through it. Which would give you a lot more turbulence. And that changes the, you know, the characteristics of the flame. Good example of it right there. You know, this has got wiring diagrams here. That was basically what was on the back of the uh, um, the control that I showed you. Here's the wiring diagram. Some more wiring diagrams for different ones. This is a series 40 series, which is a common series. They got scales to go by if you go a certain distance, how far away, what, what the what the thing will pull with the vacuum and everything. Two line lift system, maximum feet, and all that stuff you can go. That's the motor right here, permanent split capacitor motor. It's the motor's got three wires going to it: black, white, and a blue. There's three wires going to the motor. It's a two-speed motor. The hydraulic jack for the air damper. It comes off the bottom of the pump. Mine don't have that. Here's the different models here. This is the one I have right here. So in other words, the one I had, I think it called for a 120 nozzle. Okay, um, 120 gallons per minute. 
this would be the nozzle here you'd run in it pump pressure was set at 150 turbulator set at 2.5 air damper set at 2.9 that's just a basic starting point that you go by once you get it started and you, you check the fire and you can make adjustments accordingly you know but that's what that burner would call for you know, sometimes I want a little bit smaller nozzle in there and make some adjustments. I got no problem with that. So you call for a 60 degree nozzle. But basically you can get this book and you can see what, you know, your starting points are, where you should be. And we'll take it from there. Initial setup guide. Real F, F3. Uh, I think I got, I got an F5. That's the model I got right there. So there's all the different nozzles that you could run in it. Um, Delavant, that's what I run. I run Del Delavant nozzles. See if I was going to run an 85 in there. See, you can go between a 60 and an 80. And these are the different... Um, a is a hollow, semi-solid. Uh, different, you know... There's different spray patterns here. H is hollow, ES is extra solid, and SS is semi-solid. That's the um, haggle. The troubleshooting guide basically tells you know if you if the motor runs and this is happening, you go right down to the checklist. Flame retention. All right, guys, Real has got a little service kit. Inside the service kit, basically, what comes with it is um, this one's got the guide cell, uh, motor, motor to pump coupling. Okay. Four rings there. That's for the um, the filter inside the pump. There's another O ring. There's an adapter. Metric adapter. That's for the electrodes. Um, control box. You know, over the motor. No, it's got four wires actually. And it also comes with a capacitor, it's got a screw into it. That's it. 12.5 microfarads. This is a pump. Solenoid valve, got a couple of them in here. Allen key for the bypass, you're going to turn it into a two pump, two pipe system. A couple in there. That's it, that's basically what you need there for the, uh, the real yellow. That's what comes in the test kit, so you usually have what you need. Alright guys, so if you're going to have to change this pump, all right, you can see there's an Allen screw right there. There's one there, there's one on the bottom. One on the bottom, and one there. All right guys, to change the, if you ever wanted to change the pump screen, okay, there's four bolts. You can pop that cover right off. There's a screen inside there with an O-ring. You're better off just getting a new O-ring, and you can either clean the screen or get a new screen filter on a yellow. If you're going to be changing, taking the pump out, there's two Allen screws. There's one here, one on the bottom, and that pump will come right off. And there's a motor to pump coupling. 
plastic coupling that goes right in there. And to get the motor off, you'll see there's a couple Allen screws. There's an Allen screw up underneath there. And there's another one inside there. See the Allen screw? There's those two and that motor will come right off. There's a blade in there. You gotta take that blade off too. You can see the little blade in there. Little fan blade. Well, these things, they come apart. They take a little bit of work to get them apart, but they can be, you can work on them. You don't have to be scared of them. Intimidated. It's a burner, like any other burner. I'm gonna take a look at the retention head here. See, now I got this one pulled back pretty much all the way. So I'm running the smaller nozzle in there. I think I'm running a 75 nozzle in there. But if you push it forward, there'll be more airflow around the edge of that cone, which will change the characteristics of the flame. Right now, pretty much everything's just going through the center. And this flange is adjustable. And this flange is adjustable right here. You could either slide it in or out as needed. You know, and this has got a nameplate here. And the fire and the rating on it right there. 0. 0.75 to 150 gallons per hour for this burner. It's a Riello 40 F5. Myself, I like to run smaller nozzles. I never usually have an issue with it. 